Larry Eugene Phillips Jr., a man with a knack for trouble, and Decibal Stefan Emilian, or Emil, an ambitious engineer from Romania, forged an unlikely bond at the legendary Gold's Gym in vibrant Venice, Los Angeles back in 89. Phillips had a history of scams and theft, while Mata Serenu came from Romania with aspirations of success. However, their destinies would soon take an unexpected turn. But before their paths converged, Phillips had already carved a path of mischief, entangled in a web of real estate scams and sticky fingers. On the flip side, Mata Serenu, hailing from Timisoara, Romania, ventured to the City of Angels in 74, armed with an electrical engineering background and dreams of entrepreneurial triumph. Yet, fate had something different in store for them. On October 29th, their wild ride came screeching to a halt as handcuffs clasped around their wrists in Glendale, just northeast of Los Angeles. The charge? Operating a stolen vehicle was a crime that couldn't go unnoticed. As the authorities took over, a search of their vehicle unearthed a magnificent arsenal. Amidst the chaos, two semi-automatic rifles, two handguns, over 1,600 rounds of 762 by 39 mm rifle ammunition, 1,200 rounds of 9 by 19 mm parabellum, and 45 ACP handgun ammunition, radio scanners, smoke bombs, improvised explosive devices, body armor vests, and a collection of different California license plates were discovered. Caught in the act, Phillips and Mata Serenu surrendered after being discovered with a concealed weapon. Charged with conspiracy to commit robbery, they received a plea bargain resulting in a short prison sentence and probation. Upon release, their confiscated belongings were returned, except for the firearms and explosives. Their appetite for chaos remained unsatisfied. In June 1995, they committed a deadly ambush of a Brinks armored car in Winnetka, Los Angeles. They later targeted two Bank of America branches, earning them the title High Incident Bandits due to their use of heavy weaponry in previous robberies before their infamous North Hollywood attempt. On February 28, 1997, Phillips and Mata Serenu armed themselves with illegal weapons and targeted the Bank of America branch at 6600 Laurel Canyon Boulevard. They planned to destroy evidence by setting their car and weapons on fire using a jar of gasoline. Phillips carried 40 pounds of gear, including bulletproof vests and homemade body armor, while Mata Serenu wore a bulletproof vest with a metal plate. They monitored their timing using watches sewn onto their gloves. Prior to the robbery, they took phenobarbital as a sedative. Later, toxicology reports revealed additional substances in their blood. Phillips and Mata Serenu arrived at the Bank of America branch in North Hollywood in a white 1987 Chevrolet Celebrity. They set their watch alarms for eight minutes, matching their estimated police response time. Prior to the robbery, Phillips had monitored police transmissions using a radio scanner. As they approached the bank, they were spotted by LAPD officers Farrell and Perello, who were in a patrol car in Laurel Canyon. Officer Farrell called for assistance, reporting a possible robbery in progress with the code 211. They have armed with Norinco Type 56 S1 rifles. They forced a customer leaving the ATM lobby to the floor and caught the attention of a security guard inside. The guard attempted to call the police, but the message was not received. Phillips yelled, this is a holdup. Both robbers fired shots into the ceiling to intimidate the bank staff and customers, discourage resistance. Mata Serenu breached the bulletproof door, designed to resist low-velocity rounds, to enter the teller's and vault area. The robbers coerced assistant manager John Villagrana into opening the vault. Although Villagrana complied and started filling the money bag, the vault held considerably less money than the anticipated $750,000 due to a change in the bank's delivery schedule. Frustrated by the situation, Mata Serenu argued with Villagrana and demanded more money. Displaying his frustration, Mata Serenu emptied a full drum magazine of 75 rounds into the bank's safe, causing significant damage to the remaining cash. He then tried to access the bank's ATM, but discovered that the branch manager no longer had the necessary access. As they departed, the robbers locked the hostages in the bank vault. In the end, they escaped with $303,305 and three dye packs, which later exploded, rendering the stolen money useless. Upon hearing the gunfire inside the bank, the initial responding officers immediately called for backup to cover behind their patrol car. More patrol and detective units from the North Hollywood Division arrived swiftly and secured positions at each corner of the bank, establishing a perimeter. Around 9.24 a.m., Phillips exited through the north doorway and engaged in a prolonged exchange of fire with a police cruiser positioned 200 feet away. During the initial shooting, several officers, including Sergeant Dean Haynes, Officers Martin Whitfield, James Zabaravan, and 
Detective Stuart Guy and Detectives William Krulak and Tracy Angelus were wounded, along with three civilians seeking cover behind Sergeant Haynes' patrol car. Phillips also targeted an LAPD helicopter flown by Charles D. Paraguay Jr., forcing it to retreat to a safer distance. After a brief retreat indoors, Phillips re-emerged through the north doorway, while Mata Serenu exited through the south exit. Phillips and Mata Serenu persisted in firing at the officers, targeting patrol cars on Laurel Canyon and the parking lot across the street. The officers, armed mainly with the Beretta 92F FS 9mm pistols, Smith & Wesson Model 15 38 Special Revolvers and Ithaca Model 37 pump-action shotguns, discovered that their firearms couldn't penetrate the robber's body armor. Furthermore, the officers' handguns lacked the necessary range for the longer distances from which they were positioned. Approximately 10 to 15 minutes into the shootout, an officer advised fellow officers over the police frequency to refrain from stopping the getaway vehicle due to the robber's automatic weapons and the officer's inadequate means to stop them. To counter the robbers, several officers obtained AR-15-style rifles from a nearby gun store. The officers found themselves pinned down by the robbers' intense gunfire, making it extremely challenging to target them effectively with their handguns. Officers and detectives took cover at two nearby locations, offering protection from the gunfire. While Phillips sought cover near four vehicles, a gray Honda Civic, a Ford Explorer, white Acura Legend, and Chevrolet Celebrity, by the bank's north wall, police officers likely engaged him with their handguns. Officer Richard Zelensky of Valley Traffic Division effectively utilized the west wall of the adjacent Del Taco restaurant, positioned 351 feet away from Phillips. From this position, Zelensky exchanged gunfire with Phillips, firing 86 rounds of 9mm ammunition. It is believed that Zelensky's shots hit Phillips during the exchange. Additionally, Zelensky's position drew Phillips' attention away from Sergeant Haynes and Officer Whitfield, who were wounded who were wounded and had limited cover behind trees across Laurel Canyon Boulevard. Another advantageous location for the LAPD was the backyard of 6641 Agnes Avenue. Detectives positioned themselves behind a cinder block wall, providing relative cover as they fired their 9mm pistols at Phillips. Detectives Bancroft and Harley, in particular, were able to engage Phillips from a distance of approximately 55 feet, discharging between 15 and 24 rounds. As Mata Serenu moved the Chevrolet Celebrity out of the handicapped space in the north parking lot, Phillips sustained a gunshot wound to his left wrist, evident from his reaction captured in helicopter news footage. Simultaneously, LAPD gunfire struck Phillips's Heckler & Koch rifle, rendering it inoperable with damage to the receiver. Phillips then discarded the rifle and armed himself with another assault rifle from the sedan's trunk. Following the second officer down call received by LAPD radio operators during the shootout, a tactical alert was issued. The SWAT team, consisting of Donnie Anderson, Steve Gomez, Peter Weyritter, and Richard Massa, arrived on the scene 18 minutes after the shooting had commenced. Equipped with AR-15s and wearing running shoes and shorts under their body armor, they had been on an exercise run when they received the call. Upon arrival, they took control of a nearby armored truck, driven by Hector Cuevedo and David Campbell. The armored truck was utilized to evacuate wounded civilians and officers from the area. While still in the parking lot, Mata Serino sustained gunshot wounds to his right buttock, right leg, and left forearm. A fourth projectile caused a laceration to his upper right eye socket, shocking him and leading him to seek cover behind the getaway car's hood. In a state of shock, he abandoned his duffel bag of money, entered the getaway vehicle, and started the engine. Meanwhile, Phillips retrieved the HK-91 from the open trunk and continued firing at officers while using the sedan for cover as he walked alongside him. As Phillips approached the passenger's side of the getaway vehicle, he was struck in the shoulder and his rifle was hit in the receiver and magazine by police bullets. With one arm, Phillips fired a few more shots before discarding the HK-91 and retrieving the Norinco Type 56. They then left the parking lot, Mata Serino driving down the road as Phillips retreated onto the street. At 9.52 a.m., Phillips took cover behind a parked semi-truck on Archwood Street and engaged in gunfire with police officers, including Lieutenant Michael Ranshaw, officers Conrado Torres, John Caparelli, and Ed Brentlinger. His rifle eventually jammed, and due to a gunshot wound to his left wrist, he was unable to clear the jam. Phillips dropped the rifle and switched to a Beretta 92 FS pistol, which he continued firing. Officer Conrado Torres shot Phillips in the right hand, causing him to drop the pistol. Phillips picked up the pistol again, placed the muzzle under his chin, and fired. As he fell, Officer John Caparelli shot him in the upper torso, severing his spine. Both shots may have been fatal. 
Officers on the scene then shot Phillips several times while he was on the ground. After the gunfire ceased, officers surrounded Phillips, handcuffed him, he was already deceased, it was standard procedure to treat him as if he were alive, and removed his ski mask. Mata Serenu's getaway vehicle became inoperable as two of its tires were shot out and the windshield was riddled with bullet holes. At 9.56 a.m., he attempted to forcibly take control of a yellow 1963 Jeep Gladiator on Archwood Street by firing at the driver. The driver managed to escape on foot, leaving Mata Serenu unable to operate the Jeep as the driver had activated the electrical kill switch before fleeing. Mata Serenu then transferred all of his weapons and ammunition from the disabled vehicle. As news helicopters from KCBS and KCAL circled above, a patrol car driven by SWAT officers Donnie Anderson, Steve Gomez, and Richard Massa swiftly arrived and positioned themselves on the opposite side of the truck where the Chevrolet was stopped. Taking cover behind the original getaway vehicle, Mata Serenu engaged in an intense exchange of gunfire with the SWAT officers for approximately two and a half minutes. Despite being struck by a double tap from Officer Anderson, which momentarily winded him, Mata Serenu's chest armor protected him and he continued firing. Officer Anderson fired his AR-15 beneath the cars, hitting Mata Serenu in the lower legs, which eventually incapacitated him. Realizing he could no longer continue, Mata Serenu raised his hands and surrendered. Seconds after Mata Serenu surrendered, officers swiftly moved in to restrain him. While being handcuffed, SWAT officers asked for his name, to which he responded with, Pete. When questioned about the presence of any additional suspects, he reportedly retorted, Fuck you, shoot me in the head. Due to the ongoing danger in the area and standard procedure in hostile situations, ambulance personnel refrained from entering the hot zone. The police requested an ambulance, but Mata Serenu, still engaging in profanity-laden provocations and challenging the police to shoot him, succumbed to his injuries before the ambulance and EMTs were allowed to approach the scene, almost 70 minutes later. Testimony presented during a subsequent lawsuit against retired policemen John Fitrell and James Wojcicki and the city revealed that an ambulance crew had arrived but left without taking Mata Serenu, allegedly upon Wojcicki's command to get the expletive out of here. Wojcicki admitted to making a similar statement during his testimony. The ambulance driver testified that he believed his safety was at risk by remaining in the area. The officers testified that they attempted to bring the ambulance back or request another one, but the plaintiffs focused on a moment when Fitrell canceled an ambulance call and informed the dispatcher, I have no officers or citizens down here, only a suspect. It was later determined that Mata Serenu had sustained 29 gunshot wounds in his legs and had died from excessive blood loss caused by two gunshot wounds in his left thigh. Much of the incident, Phillips' death and Mata Serenu's surrender was broadcast live by news helicopters, which hovered above the scene providing real-time coverage. Over 300 law enforcement officers from various agencies responded to the citywide tactical alert. When the shooting finally ceased, it was estimated that Phillips and Mata Serenu had fired approximately 1,100 rounds, averaging about a round every two seconds. The weapons used during the incident, including a Bushmaster XM-15 illegally converted for full auto fire, a Heckler & Koch HK-91 semi-automatic rifle, a Breda 92FS Inox handgun, and three illegally converted Kalashnikov-style rifles. The robbers fired approximately 1,100 rounds, while police fired around 650 rounds. Both robbers were well-armored, with their body armor providing extensive protection except for their heads. The armor allowed them to absorb pistol bullets and shotgun pellets. One of the robbers had chest armor with a steel plate that had successfully withstood a hit from a SWAT officer's AR-15. Phillips, one of the robbers, was shot 11 times, including a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the chin. Mata Serenu, the other robber, was shot 29 times. The shootout prompted the arming of rank-and-file police officers in Los Angeles and nationwide with semi-automatic rifles due to the ineffectiveness of standard small-caliber pistols and shotguns against the robber's body armor. SWAT teams began supplementing their submachine guns with AR-15 rifles. A raid on a house linked to the robbers resulted in the seizure of incendiary ammunition, flak jackets, stolen cash, and various firearms. The LAPD received surplus M16 rifles issued to patrol sergeants, and AR-15s became standard issue in patrol vehicles. Additionally, LAPD officers were authorized to carry 45 ACP caliber semi-automatic pistols as duty firearms. LAPD Chief Bernard C. Parks reviewed the officers' use of force in the North Hollywood shootout and commended their actions. A lawsuit was filed on behalf of Mata Serenu's children, but ended in a mistrial. Eighteen officers received the Medal of Valor and a film titled 
44 minutes, the North Hollywood shootout was produced. The Los Angeles Police Museum featured an exhibit on the incident, including mannequins, weaponry, and police cars. With that said, thank you for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more. And if you found this content helpful, give the video a like. See you in the next video. Till then, take care.